small bait and switch here. We're going to start with just a couple of recent developments that you may have not heard about that are currently shipping in 7.1, and then we'll get to the, the future stuff. Uh, the first thing here, and let's get all excited about authentication, everyone. Um, <laughs> but the reason for this is uh, being able to authenticate against this thing called OpenID Connect, it's provided by systems like Azure AD or Ping or, or Google. Uh, it's really important because then DiveLine's not handling the user's password, and IT has centralized management over those users. It's, it's also just sort of where the people are going. They had AD on-premise, on, on now they have some sort of cloud identity provider. They want the central, centralized user management control so they've got good security, password complexity. It's an easy way to get multi-factor authentication too. Um, but the reason why you should get excited is for the end users, single sign-on becomes possible. Like, you know, the, you'll, the device will remember that you've logged, the, the system will remember your device, you're not getting prompted to log in all the time, and that is, is worth the price of admission. So that's shipping right now already. It's become very popular in our hosted platform. You can have it on-premise as well, starting in 7126. Chris. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the new developments we've done in DiveTab over the last year. Um, so we had stamps in DiveTab for a while, but we have increased the functionality of it. Um, you saw Jamie cr uh, add a couple of stamps to the My page in DivePort um, in the first, uh, first section. And in uh, stamps serve largely the same role in DiveTab. You can create a, uh, a simple dashboard. Uh, a stamp is just a few bits of information that give you uh, an indication of how your data is moving. Um, a stamp is created by combining a measure with a calculation, and that calculation includes a time range such as you know month to date, quarter to date, year rolling, end months, et cetera, and then some optional uh, um, comparisons. It could be the current period, or it could be, say, the previous month or the same quarter last year. Um, so we've increased the range of possibilities that you can use in DiveTab. Um, one of the other ones uh, we added was a comparison versus an aux measure. So this allows you to create a stamp that shows you, for example, like current versus versus budget or current versus goal. Um, and you can do the difference. So you could see you know, what percent are we off by or, or what's the, uh, the raw number, but the, the difference between the two. Um, these stamps can be created either as, uh, you can see some examples of some text stamps, but we also have charts uh, which will show uh, the, like uh, the, the rolling 12 or the, or the year to date in uh, bar or line form. Um, another addition we did is, uh, aligns with our self-service idea in that the user picks the stamps they want to see on this page. Uh, just like Jamie did, you went and create, pick a measure, pick a stamp template, and those are the stamps you see. This configuration is now persistent across uh, multiple devices. So if you're one of our users who, say, uses DiveTab on your laptop, then grabs your phone to go out to a customer site and you log into the site on your phone, the stamps that you pick to show on that page are going to show up on the phone just as they did uh, on, your, on your desktop. We also added an additional new page to DiveTab uh, this year, the DiveBook page. We know we have a lot of users that still use the DiveBooks in ProDiver. Uh, the goal of this is, uh, to, is ease of use because we know uh, you know, users still use their dive books. Part of is either as part of their, uh, um, you know, their daily workflow or how their in, you know, it's their entry into their data. Uh, the, go the goal of this is uh, to allow our users to have easy access to the power of ProDiver, but to do so in the context of our newer um, lightweight data analysis tool, DiveTab. It's all about trying to make your life easier. We, we want you to be able to work the way you want to work. Uh, so surveys. I'm not sure everyone necessarily knew we have surveys in DiveTab, but it's now supported in the PC. Uh, the first bullet kind of, it's, makes it sound like it's just supported in the PC, but it actually has been supported in the, our iPad or iOS product for a number of years. And this feature is actually a part of our Survey Advisor application. But now you can do it on the desktop or your laptop as well. Um, we t you would, um, all of the normal uh, you know, survey question field types that you would see in a survey if you took online would, um, you know, are present, as well as we have interesting like, you know, conditional and repeating questions that appear or disappear, depending on what um, answers you pick in other questions. And of course, we're DI, so C bases are integrated with the survey, both for filtering and selecting the possible um, answers for certain questions, as well as for how assignments are done for particular surveys. 
And last, a lot, oh, one big project we've done in the last year is trying to integrate the Measure Factory uh, with our data pages in DiveTab. Previously, data pages pulled their data from C plans, and the columns that it showed you could think of as like what you would see as summaries in ProDiver. But now, this, now the data pages, dive pages, central pages, overview, and cross pages can access factories directly. And in this case, now the columns are, this sounds familiar, just like a stamp definition, a combination of a measure and a calculation. In this uh, screen, in the, uh, the screenshot kind of in the background, you can see where the columns are, the opening balance year to date, or the previous rolling three months for the measure clo uh, closing balances. And you can also do the differences here as well. The third column is a combination of two measures to get the difference between uh, the opening, the month to date opening balance versus the same number in the previous, same month in the previous year. As part of this integration, we also added a new page type, the matrix page. This is analogous to the matrix portlet in the dive port for those of you who use that. This is a little different in that you're not showing a dimension value for the rows. Instead, each row is a different dimension. And the, uh, the number that's displayed in the page is the combination of the measure and the calculation for the column. So you can use this page to directly compare different measures to each other, but using the same calculations. That's what we've been working on in Dive Tab, Dive Tab over the last year. I'm going to hand it over to Jamie, who's going to talk about our future visions for some of our DI products. OK, so uh, this part, we're going to be talking about um, things that are uh, either projects that are currently ongoing but are long term, so they're not going to be available in 7.2, at least not you know, in the short term anyway, um, or projects that we haven't really started but we're just thinking about and we want to just kind of uh, make you all aware of them in case you have some feedback about them or ideas that, that we can collaborate on. So uh, it'll be a mix of those things. So let's start with <clears throat> my library, as we did before. Uh, it is currently in uh, Diveport. And one of the next projects we're going to have is to move it into Dive Tab as well. We want this interface mode to be possible in all the products. And an important aspect of it is we want the products to work together with the My, My Library. So if you have a, a button in My Library, it might open Dive Tab, it might open ProDiver, uh, it might bring you to Workbench, right? The, who knows what could happen, right? And we want to make sure that the interface you're using is the same in all these products, or at least is similar. So, you know, for example, we might have a, a Dive Tab. Uh, interface like this. Uh, at the top, we've just replaced the, the normal sort of page title with the My Library bar. Um, and then we might mix that with dashboards. And then if you go up at the top and click on the big button, you might get the My Library interface just like you would see in Diveport. And ideally, it would be the same buttons, the same uh, shortcuts, and the same applications below. And then you can basically reach both um, from the same, from one product. <coughs> Uh, another idea, this is kind of a, um, something we haven't really, uh, we've, we've done some prototyping on, uh, is an analytical dashboard. Uh, so you, you're familiar with the, the standard kinds of dashboards. You've got your, your manual dashboard where you put you know, anything you want on the page. Uh, we've got self-service dashboards where the content is a little more limited, but users can create them themselves. Uh, and then we've got uh, KPI-style dashboards uh, with matrix pages where you, or matrix portlets where you've got a whole bunch of measures going down the list. The, the idea with, an, with an analytical dashboard is to get a little bit of a mix of those things. We want it so that the user can create them, and the user has more control over what's on this page, but it goes a little more in depth than current self-service stamps do. Uh, so uh, there's a bunch going on here, and uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but the general idea is that on the left-hand side, the user would choose from some measures, so they're getting a little bit of an overview of what the status, status of those measures is. But they can click on one, and then on the right-hand side see something more about that measure. You know, they'll see some displays about uh, history of the measure, uh, or they might be able to switch to a, a, a dive mode, and then they can actually dive into the data. And all of this will be within one page that they can take a shortcut to uh, and keep its, its current state. Um, there's, there's some slides here I'm going to kind of skip through quickly, but uh, basically we were, we're, one of the ways we might imagine is a user might create one of these pages through a kind of a, a wizard where they'll choose some measures they want to see. They might choose certain date ranges that they're interested in, date ranges that apply to these measures, uh, maybe add some quick views. Uh, and, then, and then the stuff on the right-hand side would be also customizable in a kind of similar way to stamps in self-service today. 
they might have a, a options, multiple options to choose from to what they would like on this page. Um, so that's the idea of the analytical dashboard. <coughs> uh, Springboard uh, is a long project that is uh, that we're uh, we've talked about it multiple times at multiple user conferences. Uh, it is still not finished, sadly. Um, and in fact, one of the things that's happening this year is that we we switched some priorities around. Uh, so that we could get 7.2 and my library out without having to wait for some of these more long-term projects. Uh, Springboard is one of them. We'll talk a little bit later about uh, Spectre uh, and, and the next generation of Measure Factory. But um, so what's your current status of Springboard is that we're still working on it, uh, and uh, we hope to get that out at some point. Let's say next year. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, it is a web-based uh, uh, reporting tool. You can create reports. You can even create dashboards, you can create other kinds of displays, um, and you can mix content, uh, text, and tables, and charts, and images, um, and you can make quick views in it. It could be, there's, you know, there's a lot of features, basically, uh, all built into one product. And, um, and the goal is to, is to make it possible to make um, the kinds of displays that are uh, more complex than regular dashboards in Diveport, right? Not just one screen worth of, of data, but an entire document, um, you know, and then you could be able to print that to PDF or, or something like that. Um, one of the, another thing we want to talk about is, is non-Measure Factory use cases, right? Um, Measure Factory is a big deal, and we've got a lot of people using Measure Factory, but not everybody can. Right? It, it, Measure Factory doesn't really apply to all um, use cases. There are some cases where the data management isn't really the concern so much as the practicalities of just getting some small project into a C-base and putting up a display for someone to look at it. Uh, you don't necessarily need factory for that. So when we add other features and we build them on the measure factory, uh, those features kind of become locked into the measure factory. And people who aren't using measure factory can't use them. So that's one of our other goals um, in the next year or so is to start working on opening those features up to make it possible for people to use them with regular C bases and C plans. Uh, and the way that might work, uh, I don't have a slide, but to, uh, to imagine it, um, the simplest way we might do that is to just say treat a C plan as if it were a factory, right? And then you have to think about what's the difference between a C plan and a factory. You know, like um, C plan has calcs, which are kind of like measures. You know, there are definitely dimensions involved. Um, really, the key to measure factory is the um, management part of it, right? That the factory knows about the data, knows what direction is good for this measure? Should it be good going up or good going down? Uh, you know, documentation about the measures. And these are things that we should be able to add to a C plan. And then effectively, the C plan is like a mini measure factory. Okay, control charts. Another thing that we've talked about in the past. Um, we have a, a, a full spec on this now, and so we're ready to, to begin work um, on this in Diveport. Um, so I think that's something that will happen in 7.2. It's just not in the current version of 7.2. Um, but yeah, we want to we want to make control charts in Diveport uh, a thing. And the the control charts are interesting. They're they're a, a way to track a process that you presume has some measure of control over time. Like it is a it is a stable process. Um, and what you want what you're looking for is events in that process that um, make it. Make you wonder. You know, maybe it's not as stable as I thought, right? Uh, you know, it might be a, a value that's just um, out of the normal standard deviation range, or it might be a trend like the, everything's within the range, but they seem to be creeping upwards. You know, things like that. So, control charts are uh, are good for that sort of thing. It does require a little more um, setup uh, because it's not just like you can't just throw some data into a control chart. It has to analyze it to get the uh, to know what the bounds are supposed to be, and you have to be, you know, aware of the statistical nature of control charts. If it throws off an exception, you have to know what that means and whether to act on it or not. Uh, and then uh, the next section I want to talk about is is gateway. Um, uh, Fred was uh, was talking about gateway earlier as a, um, it's kind of a blanket product. Like the idea with gateway is there isn't a gateway.exe that you open up in your. Uh, um, uh, on your desktop. Uh, Gateway is the product suite as a whole, but integrated together so that you can go from one product to the other. And then your users don't necessarily need to be worried about which product they have or which license type they have. So uh, with Gateway, uh, our goal is to just make sure that the products 
work closer together. My library is going to be a part of that, making sure that they're connected. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's the goal of Gateway. And, and that's, this is more kind of a long-term vision, and so I'm definitely interested in feedback about how we can best do that, how we can get those products to work together. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so now let's switch over to the business rule side and talk about the measure factory. Um, I said earlier that, that, you know, like if you're imagining a C plan to be like a measure factory, the real, th the problem, the distinction between the two is that measure factory is about the management of the data. The key with factory is that it knows, um, that it knows what data is out there, right? Compare this to not factory when you have uh, C bases and C plans, those are just a bunch of files, you know, somewhere. And Diveline doesn't know uh, where they all are, what they contain, it, there's no management happening. Uh, so it's good to use the measure factory for that management purpose, but it's also hard to, to start using the measure factory because the, you know, one of the things you have to do is, is put everything into this system. So where I see the measure factory going in the future is we, we want to break it up a little bit. We want to make measure factory not so hard to get into. And uh, the, the main trick for that is to, is to make sure that, that these data sets can be independent and that uh, we don't have to have a single build process that puts them all together, right? Those are the key features of the future of measure factory is that, in effect, if you want to put a, a new um, a text file, you want to load a text file into a C base so that you can make a dive on it, you shouldn't have to rebuild all the rest of your uh, stuff, right? Uh, so, but it still has to be managed, and that's the key, right? We can't just say drop a C base into some folder and it's and you're all set. So there has to be some um, part of the process where where you're registering this data so that DiveLine knows where it is and the Diveport can find it. Um, so we're going to need some kind of database, um, and I'm imagining something in DiveLine that that, you know, maybe it's backed by Postgres or it's got, you know, its own internal system for, for managing it, but something that knows about all the measures, knows where they all come from, uh, knows about all the data sets, and knows how they're connected together. So that basically then, in this future, uh, building a C-base is more like adding data to your factory, you know, to your data lake, right? Um, it doesn't need to be this, this separate thing. It's part of, part of the, the whole ecosystem. And then in that system, um, if you want to add a new measure to something, to some existing system, you don't need to go back and rebuild everything. You just add the measure, the measure goes into the database, and that measure becomes available on your dashboards right away. Or if it involves some kind of change to the data system that needs a build, then that build gets kicked off. So this is a big dream. Uh, so it's going to take some time to get there. But I think when we get there, that'll, that'll be a breakthrough as far as um, how people use Measure Factory, it'll become much easier, basically, and it'll be more powerful. I'm going to switch over to Mike for the last section here. <clears throat> so speaking of some more data management type things, um, the Spectre engine. We all know it. We all love it. We want more of it. Uh, the next version of the Spectre engine has a code name DFG that stands for Data Flow Graph. So you think about what Spectre is used for, you know, it runs the queries at runtime, so it needs to be, uh, you know, very efficient at doing that. Uh, and it also is responsible for building the data, preparing it in the first place, and you want to make sure that's fast at, uh, at nighttime as well. And so we have this concept of turning all these operations you're asking Spectre to do, either the build or the dives, and picturing it as a graph. And that gives us access to all sorts of computer science algorithms for optimizing the graphs, uh, and optimizing how things are, maybe there's repeated operations. We can also cache things at different points at the, at the column level, and it's going to make everything faster front and back. But some concrete examples, uh, imagine a dashboard where you've got you know, a dozen or two dozen indicator portlets or other portlets on the page. You know, right now, we're going to go ask Diveport, hey, hey, I've got this query, this query, this query, this query, this query. If it turns out that most of the queries are very similar, maybe they're the same data source, maybe it's like one column over from the other one, or maybe with some of the, the filtering, there's, it's like a subset of the other one, we're just not using that information at all. It's just, we're, just, we're fast, and so we're just doing it, you know, all of them individually. But imagine if we just took that holistically and said, oh, I can do a lot less work. Uh, no problem. So that's going to help with the runtime, and then even the build time. Oh, I need to add one more column to my C base from this text file. Well, I've already got all the other columns built and prepared. Let me just incrementally build that in. That'll be very efficient. 
Um, I also mentioned one other thing, one other thing which is Spectre flow scripts. Uh, right now, in, when you're doing builds uh, and with Spectre, you've got the Spectre build UI, which makes you think of Visual Integrator. Uh, and so our new vision to make that process a little better for users is something that's almost exactly like Visual Integrator. Uh, and this is going to be called Flow Scripts. It's a new text language, but you can just use the GUI. And the nice thing here is it'll be a little more faithful representation between the text and the UI uh, and get you some of the capability you've grown to love in Visual Integrator. So it'll be build scripts grown up, basically. Um, you know, with that, it's, it's been great talking to everyone, but we are kind of out of time. Uh, I do want to just say, from a lab perspective, it's, been, it's always wonderful to come to conference and to see people and talk to you about how the stuff we write actually has an impact. So whether you're benefiting from just the foundational changes that you're using directly or it's in, 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 impacting you based on the applications you get from us, we're fantastically excited to hear about it. Come see us at our table tonight uh, at the museum. Thanks, everyone.